everyone and welcome back. I am super excited to be here today with you guys because we're going to be talking about inflation. It is the hot topic of the year. The Fed has made historic runs, increasing interest rates at an alarming pace. And this next Fed rate hike that uh, is happening pretty soon here in June. A lot of people are expecting them to stay steady, kind of stay flat. Um, some people are expecting them later on this year to maybe do some uh, some some rate cuts. We're not sure if that's going to happen anymore because surprisingly the economy has held pretty darn stern and good. The jobs report keeps coming out looking good. Uh, you know, GDP still is not indicating that things are red and need to be changed. Uh, things are still looking pretty darn good. So we don't know what the Fed is going to do, but we do know that whatever they do is going to be in response to inflation. And uh, inflation is something that is not readily understood. Many people don't know what goes into inflation and what causes it. And so that's what I want to break down today is exactly what is driving this inflation that we are seeing today and believe it or not it's not the government it's 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 not these these crazy policies that are being put in place well you know partially policies that have been removed or policies that haven't been put in place is partially affecting it uh but i want to give you a breakdown of exactly what is causing this crazy rise in inflation why are things getting expensive and why is the fed so gung-ho on fighting and taming this inflation on today's episode but before we jump in, if you get value from these episodes, show us some love, leave us some reviews. It literally just takes two seconds. Yes, you on your phone right now, go to the podcast app, click on it, scroll down to the reviews and just click the five stars or give us a one star, but at least let us know why. But but at least just leave a review. Uh, it feeds the algorithm, which allows us to bring more fantastic content to you and keep these things going. Also, if you've been interested in learning more about creating passive income from real estate, check out our website, hbgcapital.net. That's pronounced Harry Bob Gary Capital.net. Tons of free stuff on there uh, to absorb, to, to get you on your way. All right, so let's jump into inflation and what's really causing it today. So first, Let's define what inflation is. Inflation is basically where the dollar is worth less and products are worth more. In other words, if you had a pile of products, the entire pile of products in the country sitting on a desk where you could see it, we shrank them all down, and then you had a pile of money, all the money in circulation in the economy, you could make a determination based on how much dollars there is a finite amount of dollars and you have a finite amount of goods and resource resources that basically determines how many dollars are going to pay for each item based on the demand for the item so all inflation really is is it's a determination of how much money is in supply competing for products versus the products themselves if you have more money out there chasing deals chasing goods and services those goods are going to keep increasing in proportion to the amount of dollars that are being given to them up until the dollars stop coming in. Businesses will keep increasing their prices for groceries, for services, for whatever it is, if they keep running out because business is so good. So what, what do you do if you're a farmer? If you're at the farmer's market in the first 30 minutes, you sell out all your apples, you go, huh, I'm going to put a higher price on them. So the next day you put the higher price on them, you sell out in two hours, you go, huh, next day you do a higher price, you sell them first, and you keep doing this until you arrive at a price that the market says, hey, I think this is I think this is a fair price to the point where maybe you, you just barely sell your apples at the end of the day. The, the same thing happens with inflation. So we've had inflation because we have had all this money, we've had more money in the economy chasing goods and services. So let's let's talk about that last one and why we are seeing a historic run up in prices for goods and services and why we've got so much capital that's been available. So it all kind of goes back. There's there's many there's not one thing to point at here, but a big part of it was the amount of money printing that they did. So they call it quantitative easing. That basically means that hey, we're going to print a lot of money. We're going to we're going to jack the the treasury rates down through purchasing bond, uh, United States treasuries, 
and we're going to make it very attractive to go and borrow money. When they do that, when they buy these treasury bonds, it lowers the price of the treasury bonds and the lower price means that the, the, the yield goes down and that, that, that treasury yield is kind of like a benchmark that banks and other, um, other lenders use to set their lending rate. And once they've set their lending rate, if it is lower than it was earlier, chances are you're going to have more people borrowing money. And what do you do when you borrow money? You spend it on things. You buy things. There's more money in the economy. So the lower the interest rate goes, the more borrowing there is, the more money you have in the system that is chasing um, chasing pretty much everything, products and services that are out there. So big part about it is is how much money they printed and this happened during covid as as a as a measure to try and stimulate the economy from going into some crazy downward spiral that it seems like it was going on so the government did what the government knows best which is just print money and that's how we got a lot of this 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 money that's out there in the system uh, to this day now there's a few other big things that are are primarily contributing to to this inflation yes we we did print a lot of money but we also basically exported a lot of that inflation to other countries because the united states gets to print money and buy real goods and services uh, from other countries that ship here because we're the world's reserve currency i want to talk about the what i honestly think is besides the money printing the biggest the second biggest uh, reason why we're seeing inflation is that's energy prices. Everything is based on energy prices that's a good in service. Just about everything. Because if you're going to the grocery store and buying food, that food had to get there somehow. That food got there on a truck. That truck used oil and gas in order to get the groceries there. So if a grocery chain's transportation is costing more money, aka oil prices go up, then that is a big problem. And one of the reasons why this has been happening is the current uh, administration in the United States is very green. Um, you know, they, they, they shut the spigots off, you know, they uh, reversed what the previous president had, had kind of done and in place and was, was very pro energy. This, this current administration's not very pro energy. So they've been shutting all this down. This is causing gas prices to go up. You, you saw last year just how crazy gas prices got. I mean, God, it was like, I'd never seen it at $5 a gallon at the pump, but it was like $5 and 50 cents. It was like eight bucks some in some places. This was crazy. When gas goes up, everything goes up because so many goods and services use gas to, to deliver or get their services there, or they do business with a vendor that does. So when that vendor's costs go up, they pass that along to the business that they're selling stuff to. They pass that cost along and that business then says, oh my gosh, well, I got to pass this on to the next business. And then eventually it makes it to the consumer. That's the last person to get the good or service is the consumer. So that cost eventually gets passed along to the consumer. And that's why you're seeing such crazy grocery prices and uh, prices for, for products that uh, didn't cost a whole lot. In construction, it's 34% at least on our books, more expensive to build a home today than it was a year and a half ago um, due to a lot of this stuff. So that's another big reason. You've got the money printing that the Fed did, making a lot of money available to people to go and spend. You've got the the the, his, the crazy run up in, in energy prices that is you know caused by you know the Ukraine war and some other things and the administration but energy prices that's 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 essentially something else that's influencing inflation heavily. And then you also have the supply chain. So China is the largest manufacturer of, of goods in the world. I mean, they're, they're kind of like scaling out of this in industrial phase that they're in and becoming more of a consumer country. But China produces so many goods and services, and they've had the str most stringent lockdown measures because of COVID. Uh, when people can't work and go to the factories and produce materials and goods, you don't have as many of them. Well, the simple law of supply and demand tells us that if you don't have as many goods as money chasing it, the price of those goods goes up. So if the, if the apple farmers at the farmer's market and all of a sudden the farmers that were his competitors all 
got COVID or all their workers got COVID and stopped picking apples and he shows up and he's the only apple farmer at the market that day, what do you think he's going to do to his apples? He's going to push up the prices. It's the same concept. That's why you've got a lot of run up in construction costs and costs for real goods and services is there's just not as many of them. We can't get it because COVID broke the supply chain and a lot of company uh, a lot of countries are are still playing catch up uh trying to get the supply chain fixed trying to get everybody in you know china kind of eased up on the on the regulations with covid so those are the, the the big three those are the big three that are driving inflation in my opinion is you've got the 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 fed that did all this money printing lowered rates uh made it more attractive to to borrow money as opposed, uh, and as a result, there's more money in the economy. You've got the energy prices that increased, increasing the price and everything else. And then you got the supply chain that's uh, kind of preventing the supply of new, new goods from uh, getting into the country. All right. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to reach out to us. I love talking about this stuff. Um, if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, again, head on over to our website, hbgcapital.com. Dot net, and we'll see you next time.